plan and you end up in London in 2012 in the Olympics, would you do anything different to what you did in 2008? Ah, well, I think I'm a different athlete now to when I went to Beijing. Uh, my, you know, I've raced at the top level. I've, you know, I've beaten world championship finalists, European championship finalists, whereas, you know, before in 2008, I was kind of new on the scene, certainly at Olympic level. So uh, would I do anything differently? Nah, I'd probably, not really, to be honest. I mean, I think just when you get more experience, your decisions like race mm -hmm. tactics and split to second decisions that you make in competition, they just kind of flow, you know. So just, I think I, I work better when I just kind of don't go in with a blank mind and don't stress about, you know, what's this guy going to do? What's that, you know, just go in and give it a lash, like, and... And uh, you know, if I've done the training and I'm in the in the right shape, right condition. So you're affected by pressure then. Uh, it's a very pressurized situation. The Olympic Games. <laughs> well, the last Olympics I wasn't because I wasn't expected. I actually ran probably better than what most people would have expected. Uh, I finished way higher than what I was ranked, so I didn't really feel too much pressure there. Uh, the next Olympics, I mean, would I be affected by pressure? <sighs> Certainly in the Olympics, I think it would get to everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, go, if I go there for a second time, I'll, my expectations will be an awful lot higher. But at the same time, you have to try and just be like, you know what? Mm -hmm. I've done the work, I've done the training. Whatever happens, happens. And you know, I've, you know, my record in championships has been pretty patchy. Like, you know, I went to World Championships and was carrying a hamstring injury in the 800, got knocked out. Went to Europeans, which you know, I mean. I was expected to finish, certainly I, I was expecting to finish top five, top six, and uh, about 10 days before the championships came down with a throat infection. And, you know, I didn't feel any pressure going to that because I knew uh, going into those championships last summer, I was like, man, this is probably not going to be my day. So uh, usually I don't really get too worked up about mm -hmm. championships, but again, I haven't, I haven't produced my best form at the championships and that's the key like going to the olympics you have to be on that day at your very best and that's something that i have yet to master so uh i'll be more focused on myself rather than the pressures of you know the crowd and all the rest so yeah now predominantly you are an 800 meter runner but you've been doing a bit of the 1500 lately have you decided what you're going to focus on for london uh no not yet i'll see which one's going better i think i think the 800 and 1500 they complement each other well the training the way i train it suits racing both. Certainly, I've had more success at the 800 meters. I kind of focused a bit more on the 1500 last year, which, you know, as I just said, uh, didn't really pan out too well for me. So, uh, I think I just kind of see the uh, the 800 as like, you know, my baby. I'm like, after the summer, you know, after Barcelona, I was like, man, I'm going back to the 800, but I'm going to see how, how the results play out. I think I'll definitely get uh, the A standard in the 800 because it's slower than my personal best. So, I'm pretty sure I could do that. In the 1500, the standard isn't, you know, it's quicker than my PB, but I've, I'm inexperienced at 1500, so I'm going to try for both of them. I think the 800 will be the main focus for now, get that standard out of the way, and then try for the 1500 standard, and if I get it, I get it. If not, I don't. I can compete, I think, just as well in either event. So we'll see uh, next summer how the results have played out. You're based in Limerick, training in UL. What's life like down there? Oh man, I love Limerick. Yeah. Oh man, I love Limerick. Limerick. I think Limerick UL. I think it's the best place in Ireland to train. Uh, you know, I'd like to think I have experience. You know, being fr training in America, I've trained in Spain as well with a group for a while, and uh, you know, I've seen different training setups all over. And and UL definitely rivals anything. Uh, you know, the gym, the track, uh, everything, the ease of living down there. Everything was within five minutes. You know, my physio, my doctor. Uh, my weights coach, the trails to run on, you know, I run on the riverbank down by the Shannon. So life down there is pretty sweet. I love, I love living down there. It's great. Like, uh, just, it's so convenient really is the, the key to it. Describe a day in the life of you, of what training you do and what you get up to. I'm going to be giving out my training. <laughs> I don't, uh, usually get up around 8 a.m., uh, have a light breakfast, go out then for anywhere between 8 and 8 and 11 miles. Usually I do drills and plyometrics after that. Uh, come home then, have a bit of lunch, go on the internet for a bit, maybe watch uh, some TV. Uh, then maybe around two o'clock, I'd jump into the bed, have an hour and a half, two hour nap, up then at four o'clock, uh, have a coffee, coffee and a snack. Out then for second training, which usually is about maybe four to six miles and uh, core work in the, like I'll go in the gym, then do core work, rehab, strength work in the gym. 
finish that, come home, then have me dinner, and after that, just uh, chill out for the evening. Are you strict on your diet? Because you know my brother's a runner and, and he eats everything and anything. What is it the same for you? He's nineteen now. You're a little bit older. I know, than I'm him. a bit, bit too old <laughs> to be eating, uh, you know, fruit pastilles for my dinner. Um, <laughs> no, I'd be strict enough. It, it is. I love food. Like I love chocolate, sweets, the works, but you know you can't really fuel yourself properly on that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I enjoy cooking a lot as well. I mean, I'd be pretty good in the kitchen at making, you know, soups or mm-hmm. my, my own homemade stuff. So I'd be strict enough, but I'd be, I mean... You reward yourself. I reward myself as well. You know, after a good race, I might go have a full Irish breakfast. <laughs> oh, man, that's, that's my Achilles heel. Don't get me started. Do you feel that you have to sacrifice maybe things like your social life or going out with your friends and things like that? Are supposed to follow your dreams? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's probably another thing that the general public wouldn't really... Like the guys I went to secondary school with, I mean, they were like my best mates, and the lifestyle maybe of a of a regular, you know, regular person in Ireland, the social life is revolves an awful lot around you know going to the pub mm-hmm. or going out. Uh, I would have lost contact with an awful lot of my good mates. I mean, you know, I'm, I could call them up and chat to them, but I don't see them all that often. I think you know the lifestyle of an athlete really it's fairly monotonous, and it you know. What the people, what the general public would see on the TV, you know, watching the Olympics or watching the Diamond League, or, but the amount of hours that you have to put in and the amount of sacrifice you have to make, you know, you, you can't go out, uh, you know, you always have to watch what you eat, post workout recovery, all that kind of thing. It's, it's, it's a, a whole process that, but I mean, at the same time, I mean, it's sacrifices, but I'm 100% like happy to make them. I mean, competing at the Olympics or, you know, running in big races, you know. Would you get frustrated then when you see the likes of the Premier League footballers getting paid thousands a week and able to go out and drink every weekend or so it looks like anyway? Uh, yeah, I mean, it is... Uh, I can't say I'm jealous of them. I'd, I'd rather do athletics than do, you know, mm-hmm. play football in the Premier League. Obviously, the financial rewards are so much greater in the Premier League, but at the same time, football is the biggest sport in the world, so those guys generate so much more money. I mean, athletics in Ireland is just a minority sport, and, uh, you know, whereas... In, on the continent, it's much bigger. So you can't, I can't expect to earn the same as, you know, Drogba or even, you know, Brian O'Driscoll or mm-hmm. these guys in rugby. So it does, uh, my whole, financially, like my only aim is to stay afloat financially. How do you survive financially though as an athlete? Because, you know, as you said, it's a minority sport. Yeah, well, I've been lucky enough that, you know, I have uh, my grant from the Irish Sports Council, which amounts to 12,000 euros a year. Uh, I mean, it's not a whole lot of money, no, but... It doesn't uh, sound like it. Ah, man, you can make it stretch, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Ryanair and all the rest now. And then ASICs uh, sponsor my shoes and uh, they pay me a little money as well. And then News Talk FM also sponsor me. So I've been really lucky with getting good sponsors on board that are really supportive to what I'm trying to do and they believe in what I'm trying to do. And, uh, you know, as I said, you know, I'm not driving around in a Mercedes or whatever, you know, drinking champagne every weekend, but... I'm happy enough that I can fund my training at the level that's required to compete at the level that you know I aspire to compete at. You know, so it's uh, I know it's I've I've been lucky like it's worked out well. I mean, there's other athletes maybe that that would be probably as talented or more talented than me that haven't got that backing behind them. So uh, I'm happy with my lot. You know, I'm do you unable worry to though survive. about life after athletics because it's such a short career. Yeah, I mean, I pretty much went straight from college like into full-time athletics, so I my CV is, you know, a blank piece of paper. So I would, now that I'm probably in the autumn of my career, say I, I realistically I won't be trying for Rio 2016. Um, yeah, it's something I do think about. At the, actually, at the moment, I'm studying a master's in English, so I'm trying to, with the Open University, so I'm trying to keep, you know, my education going that way. Uh, but... I have no idea like what I'm going to do after athletics. I mean, athletics really is a huge, huge passion for me, and I, you know, I dedicate all my time to it. And when it comes time to put that to one side, ah, uh, I don't know what really. I don't know what the future holds. I mean, I'm sure I'm going to give, you know, I give all my attention to athletics right now. Whatever I decide to do in my career, if I give it that same attention, I'm sure I'll, I'll be successful at it. But the question is. Oh, yeah, you don't you don't want to offer me a job or something? <laughs> you know, I don't know. If there's any jobs out there? <laughs> so. We're pretty much into the run-up to the Olympics now. What's in store for you over the next while? Uh, well, at the minute, actually, I'm recovering from uh, surgery. I had surgery last week in Germany for a uh, bilateral sports hernia. So uh, my initial 
plan for the next couple of weeks is just to recover from that, get back training. Uh, it's been a bit of a disjointed year for me so far with regards to preparation for the summer season. But I still think I'll be able to make a late run, maybe middle of July, towards the end of July, August time, try and get uh, qualified for the World Championships that are on this summer and Olympics. Uh, so I'm actually going to Portugal for a training camp with Athletics Ireland in a couple of weeks. I'm hoping to use that to kind of kickstart the getting back into race fitness. Uh, I, I don't really know what race I'm going to do just yet. I had a whole race program lined up, but I, I'm kind of earmarking the middle of July to be back, you know, racing on, on the European circuit to try and get some fast times. Well, we look forward to monitoring your progress anyway. We've been talking sports with Thomas Chamney. Until next time, goodbye.